looking at the second Hobbes reading, reading 11, review questions, in this very famous part of Hobbes' Leviathan. Number one, in the first few paragraphs of this chapter, Hobbes argues that we are all basically equal in physical and mental abilities. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? This is a bad thing, according to Hobbes, because the fact that uh, all of us basically have uh, equal power mentally and physically means that uh, we're all willing to engage in conflict if we are competing over scarce resources, if we all want the same thing, that uh, this leads, this equality of physical and mental power leads to violence and conflict. Everyone sort of going for the goods that they want. Um, so this sort of leads up to the idea that uh, you need a stronger force to keep order, and that is the, the state, the Leviathan. Number two, Hobbes claims that, quote, men have no pleasure, but on the contrary, a great deal of grief in keeping company where there is no power able to overawe them all. Do you agree? Why or why not? Uh, I hope that we all understand what he's getting at there. And I hope that we see that this isn't the first time that we've seen this sort of thought. It certainly exists in Dante, this idea that somebody has to be in charge. This ancient idea shows up again in Hobbes, perhaps in a different context, uh, but still, this idea that uh, if we are all equal in status, that this is not actually a uh, good situation because it leads to conflict. That uh, human beings need some power able to overawe, think about what that word means, them all, intimidate them, keep them in a state of, well, Machiavelli would say a state of fear, right? Um, so basically that human beings can't really live together on a, on a basis of, of actual equality. Uh, do you agree? Why or why not? I don't know. Do you agree? Number three, how does Hobbes characterize the condition of human beings when they, quote, live without a common power to keep them all in awe? Well, that is both the natural condition of human beings, that is, um, by definition, when there's no Leviathan, when there's no government in, in place, that's their natural condition or what will later be called clearly the state of nature. But it's important to see that Hobbes sees it also as a state of war and the war of everyone against everyone else, because without, uh, without the power in place to make laws, nothing is really wrong, right or wrong. So people can do whatever they want. So they do. And that is a state of war. Number four, Hobbes claims that, quote, to this war of every man against every man, this also is consequent, that nothing can be unjust. The notions of right and wrong, justice and injustice, have there no place. Where there is no common power, there is no law. Where no law, no injustice, do you agree? Well, I mean, I don't know if you agree, but, you know, I hope we all focus on that section of uh, Leviathan. It's one of the most important things he says, I think, that the idea of justice and injustice, of right and wrong, just like the idea of property, they don't exist in nature. They, they're artificial conventions that human beings make. So that there is no right or wrong. There's no justice and injustice. There's no such thing as theft in the state of nature because there's no such thing as property. The only rights that exist in nature are the rights of self-preservation, and pretty much they uh, authorize you to do whatever you want. Uh, there's no, so we're completely lost, according to Hobbes, without uh, government, without some kind of state to create and enforce justice uh, naturally. You know, I don't know if we agree. Certainly, the next thing we'll read by John Locke, the second treatise government, he certainly didn't agree. He thought there was definitely justice in the state of nature. He did not think that the state of nature was a state of war.